Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another amazing episode of That's So Bro. This is episode number 10 and today's topic is the craziest stories that we have to tell everyone. These will be personal stories, yeah. some will be confessions, and also we have some stories from some of our fans. So, without further ado, um, we wanted anyway this episode to be kind of like a lighthearted episode, so we will share as much as we can. And this first story is going to paint me to be a complete asshole. Oh, he's a, he's so a, it's, a, it's a normal a story. Pretty asshole. I was this person, you guys. I am not this person anymore. But... The first serious girlfriend I had that you might remember, whose <gasps> name I'm not going to mention here. I remember. Fantastic. Wasn't really mine to begin with, right? So how I met this girl was, she was with another friend. I mean, obviously. Right. I wouldn't think of this any other. Way. She was with another friend and he... Oh, it's a he. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. She, I, I said she. In, in our little clique that we had back then, he was the most... He was the most decent, he was the nicest, and the most innocent guy. Not you? Not me. Hmm. Right. Clearly. Um, so, so <laughs> basically, I, I can't say it without saying a name. So, basically, what happened was... So, give her a name. We'll call her Takshi 2. Takshi 2. Yeah. Right. Takshi 2. <laughs> so, Takshi 2 um, was dating my friend Samantha. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so Takshi and Samantha were a very decent couple, and um, we got to know Takshi too because my f- other friend, Huzefa, uh, was having a Ramadan, like the biryani session, where we all sit down and eat the delicious food, right? So that's when we first met her, and, and Takshi too was a very nice girl, unlike this Takshi. Um, this Takshi is the best. This Takshi very scares me sometimes. This Takshi, this Takshi doesn't come on camera. He goes, all right, you just have to... Our, our, our season finale will feature this Takshi. But at the count. Face reveal. Face reveal. The real Takshi. Um, so I, I got to talk to this girl. And like, you know how like friends talk to oh, yeah, you. Yeah. And I found that I had like a lot of similarities with this girl. Like from, from the... Two eyes, nose, ears. Yeah, the, all those. Hands. Hands. Um, same taste in music. Yeah. Uh, same gong jokes, uh-huh. not as not as great as your joke. <gasps> yes, I, I don't know if that great, Yashan. Oh, uh, but stop uh, it. just just the lamest lamest. So what happened was um, we were invited to this girl's birthday party. She was how old again? Uh, Seventeen or something. Uh, how old uh, were you? Eighteen. <laughs> same, 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 same. Um, and I think from that moment, like uh, after we got invited to her birthday party, um, she who me up with her friend with her best friend so in her Takshi 3 right so in her mind the now the guy she who's the guy who's her boyfriend's good friend and her best friend and our thing and that to girls means something really special I was like alright cool but then the more Takshi 3 and I talked the more I realized I had more things in common with Takshi 2 and not Takshi 3 you know what I mean and then dude I, I can't I can't say too much of what happened, but like after a while of talking, Takshi too and I realized that we had feelings for each other. Alright? And this is while she was with Samantha and I felt like such a piece of shit and, and there was nothing I could do. And I, I first did the honorable thing and I told him, Look, bro. Um, and she has told him, Look, we realized that Mehmet Um so what we'll do is we we'll just not talk to each other. Alright? So that you know your relationship is safe. And he was like, and he was decent enough to say, no, bro, it's okay. Like, I understand these things happen. Just maybe space yourselves out. But He's trying to get rid of Takshi too. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> um, and we just, we just didn't. All right. So we said we are not going to talk anymore. And then him and him accidentally you send a text or some stupid shit. And we just got back to talking. How do you accidentally send a text? I don't know, Isha, I was a piece of shit. I wrote a song. <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> Accidentally wrote an entire song. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I heard William Shakespeare also wrote something. Yeah, yeah, it's all accidental, yeah, right? Yeah. And then dude basically got to a point where she had to now pick between the guy who was really heartbroken that his friend and now his girlfriend are actually kind of having a thing behind him. And then he started like lying to her and stuff and got caught. And after that, Takshi too, I, I know that 
that he did that out of desperation. But Takshi too then conveniently used that. Like we, I wouldn't say just her. We conveniently used that as an excuse for her to not talk to this guy anymore. And then she broke it off with that guy. And we were immediately a thing. What a teenage... What a piece of shit. Teenage drama. I am a teenage dirtbag, baby. I get it. I understand. The twist there... There's a twist? The twist, Mashang. You slept with Takshi 3. No. The the twist there is, after seeing Takshi 2 for a while, and we were dating for about a year and (laughs) a half-ish, I know Takshi. Uh, Takshi 1. After after dating Takshi 2 for a year and a half... um, it, it got to a point where Takshi 2 and I weren't seeing eye to eye anymore. Because she's short. No, she's actually not bad. Um, we, we just couldn't meet as much and I think work got in the way or something. So we had to break up. All right. My friend group, including Huzefa, um, were like, look, Mashan, because she kept calling me to try to make things work, he said, look, bro, what we'll do is we'll keep her company. All right, we'll talk to her. Don't worry about it. Don't answer her calls. And I was like, oh, what, what amazing friends I have. I didn't know that Huzefa, yes. Lalit, and a third person whose name I can't bother with, they were actually trying to get Huzefa to hook up with Takshi too. Oh. And they did. Oh. So that girl has now been passed on from Samantha to me to Huzefa. And after that, I was like, well, you get what you deserve. And that's how we're going to start today's episode, you guys. I will come out and confess that I am a piece of shit. Well, uh, that's, that's your cut, uh, Takshi. <laughs> right the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you guys, so much for watching today's episode. It was just my confession. I don't want to get it off. Um, Do you feel better? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is like a soap opera, man. You know, well, like welcome, he loved him. He loved welcome him, to my loved life, him. man. Man, my, my teenage years was a bit uh, less complicated. Was it? <laughs> Please take the attention away from me. <laughs> All right, so when uh, we were ta- planning this episode, uh, Amanda was like, let's do something where we share some personal stories. So one the first story that pops into my mind, I'm going to name it the urine story. The urine story. Dun, 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 We need to start uh, with a song for each other's story. The urine story. All right, let me start. So I was in grade 12, and uh, we were doing uh, a radio show mm-hmm. back then. At, uh, it was 24 hours for seven days. At night, the girls had to go home. Right. So the guys were there throughout. The girls had to leave around 6 p.m. And what the school used to do is they used to switch off the power from the fourth floor downwards. Okay. The boys' bathroom was in the second floor. There was no way we were going to go in the middle of the night in that pitch darkness to the second floor. Right. I mean, we are men who are afraid of the dark. Yeah, like any real man is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why would you be brave of the dark? You don't know who's there. Mohini. Anyways, uh, because of our fear of the dark and right. you know the unknown, and the school's probably haunted. Uh, what we did was uh, we did what any man would do. We opened a window on the fifth floor, right? And we peed out of the window. Peed out of the window, like real men. Of course, that's the is point. Is Takshi judging me? Takshi is very interested in the story. <laughs> <laughs> so what we did was the windows were a bit up, like they were not in the center. They were like a little bit high up. So we had to pile a couple of chairs, open the window, and pee. Me and another friend. My friend was in another window. Oh, we were not using the same window, obviously. <laughs> Hold it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So while we were peeing, another friend of mine, the third friend was like, oh, this is hilarious. Let me take a picture. Because we had switched off all the lights. Right. So that no one will notice that we're doing this. Right. So the dude comes from behind before. This is before cell phones. We had these digital cameras, you know. The flip phone. You no, know, we had those digital cameras. Oh, right. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> so then uh, he takes a picture and a flash flashes. And like, right. crash. And we got scared. We're like, oh shit, we got caught. And you know, we lost control. You know, you know the, the flow of urine went all over the place. On the glass, on the walls and everything. It was splattered everywhere. And uh, we were like... Uh, so you all did clean up after that? Uh, we, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it dries. I mean, you know, nature, circle of life. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we, uh, cl- we, we zipped ourselves and we came down from the chairs and we were laughing and all that. We, it was all cool. We didn't even think much about it. The three days after that, uh, while the radio station was still happening, we, I told you that girls can come in the morning. Right. So then uh, one of the girls was going through a breakup or something. I can't remember what it was. But she was feeling uh, sad. Okay. She was on the window. Fully open. Uh, the same window where we had just... Uh, <laughs> she was on the window with her hands like this, looking out. And I was like, uh, 
Are you okay? She's like, yeah. And you know, when you stand far, you can see the dust stains, you know, the, the, the patches around. And we were like, should we tell her? And uh, I'm like, can we? And I'm like, how's the air? Is the air fresh? And she's like, yeah. Ugh. The air is nice and fresh here in the fifth floor. And um, eventually someone told her what happened. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the guy who took the picture because he's, oh, okay. he, he, was, he has the picture. Yeah, he has the picture. And he's like, uh, excuse me. I'll give her a name. She's Takshi Six. Right. Takshi Six. Uh, look at this picture. And she saw the picture. At first, she didn't realize what had happened. She was like, hmm. Looks out again. Yeah, yeah. And it, we, we laughed our asses off, man. It was hilarious. Bad hilarious. Don't do it. But it was hilarious. Hilarious, nonetheless. And uh, then anyway, it went to the teachers and we had to do a whole clean up. It was a whole thing, but uh, till that point, it was fine. I like how you say we had to do a clean up like, <laughs> <laughs> like that was a bad thing. <laughs> That's why we told the dude, no evidence. Right. It's always that one guy, you know, yeah, it screws yeah, it up for everybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you? Have you ever peed out of the window? I've never peed out of the window, Shad. Have you peed out of a moving train? No. No, out of a train? Yeah. No. Sad, sad life. Okay, no. You know what? Okay, I, I, can, I can top your story. Oh my God, he's going to top. And, and this is something that happened to me within the last week. I love it when it's fresh. Okay. And Takshi, this one's for you, sorry, bro. So basically what happened... Takshi, do you want to like come into the camera? I Takshi, come into the camera. All right, so basically what happened, bro, is this, right? Um... I am I am a nerd. I don't know, I'm not a nerd. That's smart. I'm a geek, right? And Geeks I'm, are cool. No, they're not. Oh uh, yeah, sure, 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 <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> they're not the geek. All right. So I'm a geek in that I I love Pokemon. All right. Ah, uh, so uncool geek. Yeah, one of those. Um, so I wanted to get like a Pokemon trading card set because I know that there's like a trading card system and there's a monetary value and all that shit. So, dude, do you have a collection though? I want to start one. Oh, it's very late, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's fine. So. So, bro, I, I went to this shop. They were advertising this place on Instagram. I think I know which shop you're talking right. about. Right. We're not going to mention the name of the shop, okay. right? For the sake of this, I'm not going to mention. So, I went to this shop. Um, and so, I basically contacted them on Instagram. I said, hey, how much is this? And they said, okay, it's this, is this. I said, fantastic. The next day, I had a shoot in that area. So, I was like, oh, hell. So, I'll go pick it up and then go home. So, then I went there, Yoshan. And so... Now, there's no boarding and there's no hoarding. There's no sign. There's nothing. Maybe have that. There's no boarding. There's no hoarding. There's no sign. There's nothing that says we are selling stuff here. Please come marketplace. So I was like, oh, okay. So now it says number 17. I can't see a number 17, but there's a consulate somewhere there, right? Um, so I'm like, so I send them a picture. I, I text them on Instagram and I send them a picture saying, hey, uh, I'm, I'm right here at the moment. Uh, where exactly is your place? And I, and I sent the picture as well. And the second I sent the picture, in about two or three seconds, because they were online, um, in about two or three seconds, Masha, this white guy came out. And he's like, hey man, it's here. I was like, oh, okay. And I was like, what, what, what great service that the owner of the shop would come out to get you. Like generally people wait for you to come inside right. the shop and talk. Right. This guy came outside and he's like, hey Masha, we're here. So I was like, um, oh, that's, that's fantastic. And like proper, like proper Sudda. So then he took me into his house and it's a really nice house, dude. Like it is, it is so within the, within the confines of Colombo, it is very architecturally beautiful, all right? He has the whole, um, he has one of those, he has one of those sitting areas that sink in. A sex bed. No. <laughs> he, has, he has one of those sitting areas that basically it, it's, it's, it goes into the floor. So you sit down and it's like a big conversation thing there. Then he has another island thing there and different places like read and stuff. And there's, there's clearly a place that's an office place and there's statues and sculptures. It's a beautiful place. So now this man is taking me. Like, so we start from this corridor and we're going through this corridor. And it's like, wow, this is a beautiful place you have. And at the same time, Masha, I'm thinking, why would you have a shop that is so inside. So I thought, ah, oh, so he must be doing something really big. And in his past time, sort of like a hobby thing, is this Pokemon thing. And it must be in like a garage or something because he's just now just going through this and then this and then this. And I keep saying, wow, that's this really beautiful stuff. You guys. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks so much. And then, dude, like, I can't stand up to show you this. So then, so there's, 
there's a, another room somewhere here that he's about to take me through another corridor. And I was like, hey man, this, this is absolutely beautiful. Good for you, you know what I mean? He's like, oh, thanks. So he, I'm here. He's like, oh, oh, thanks so much, man. And then he's about to open this door. And then he looks at me like this. And then he just goes, Bleh. and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. He's like, why? I was like, this, this is the Pokemon place, right? He's like, no. I was like, what, what, what do you mean? I was like, uh, no, so I, so I, this, this is the Pokemon place, like the Pokemon trading card thing. He's like, no, man, no, this, no. What are you talking about? I was like, no, look, look, look. He said, oh, no, that's, that's number 17. This is number 15. It's like, oh. Uh, I was like, oh, man, I'm so sorry. He's like, no, no, the guy I called also kind of looked like you, so I'm so sorry. And then they're caught in that small situation where I don't know what to tell this guy, and he doesn't know what to tell me. He said, and now I had to get out. So I'm like, the dude, you, do you also like Pokemon cards? The Pokemon cards are great, right? He's like, yeah, yeah that's the joke. So, so then we had a very awkward, and it's, it's a long corridor in, so there's a very long corridor walk out. And I was like, man, I'm so sorry. I hope you really find your guy. He's like, I hope you find your Pokemon cards, bro. And we just, we just, uh, just, just, just went and then after all that you shot it started raining also the tuk-tuk guy who came to pick me up is still there waiting for me thinking wow he's going a long time to take this money <laughs> and then the best part about all that dude is the shop is bloody closed <laughs> I think, I think that's what the best part the best part is that the, what happened the best part is that I can <laughs> now say Pokemon almost got me fucked late <laughs> Man. Oh, thanks so much, bro. <laughs> so yeah. That was for you, actually. There you go. Man, uh, a couple of uh, New Year's ago, maybe, I think it was 2014, uh, New Year's night, my wife and I went to celebrate New Year's in a, in a club. I, I can't remember which was the name of it. It's behind the Holiday Inn now. Ramada, is it? Uh, chiller, chiller room. Now it's chiller. It used to be something else back then. Heater room. Right. Yeah, the, the names keep changing. Karma. Karma. Ka- I ka- think ka- it was karma. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't remember. Anyway, we were at the club, and uh, it was like three in the morning. Everyone was like starting to leave, and you know, it was end of the party. I had gone with a bunch of friends, by the way. Right. Do you hear a loud noise in your headphones? It's it's the sound. You guys, so now as you can see, this room has been upgraded. We also have background noise now. This background, the setting that I put here is is rain. It's an ambient setting. It's an ambient setting, you guys. All right. So it's a. You're welcome. Go for your shot. So Kava. <laughs> yeah. So I had gone with some friends and my right. wife. Uh, that time she was my girlfriend. Uh, as we were walking out, my girlfriend looks up and is like, I, "I want some water." So I go to the bar alone. My friends at the entrance waiting for me. So I told the bartender, dude, I need a couple of waters and I'm about to pay. There's this really old dude standing in the corner of the bar. He's looking at me as like, hey. And I'm like, uh, what's up, you know? And he's like, uh, are your friends uh, bothering you? I'm like, no, not really. No, I saw them making fun of you. I'm like, yeah, you know, we're friends. We make fun of each other. Right. He's like, but if they're bothering you, let me know, right? I know the owner of this place. And uh, any of the clubs, if you want to get in, I can help you get in. I'm like, okay. And then he started leaning on to me. Like he like hopped on the bar seats. Like I didn't even realize he had hopped. It was like a stick, tick, tick, tick. Next thing I know, he's like leaning on to me. And he's like rubbing his hand on my hand. <laughs> and I'm like, bartender, water please. Water please. And I look at my wife, like, girlfriend is like, you know, come over here, hold my hand, make him know that I'm straight. My girlfriend, my wife now was laughing her ass off she was at the entrance she can see what's happening and she's like <laughs> and my friends can see they are laughing their ass off and i'm like bartender before i kill someone <laughs> get me my water bottle and this dude's like whispering it was like if you come with me i'll show you a great time i'm like i don't want to see a great time I need a water bottle please give me the water bottle <laughs> and finally the bartender gives me the water bottle and the dude gives me his card right I, I think I still have it somewhere just in case, you know, if yeah, I get into a club or something. <laughs> Took the water bottles. I'm like, nice to meet you. That's my girlfriend over there. Those are my friends waiting for me. And he's like, oh, that's your girlfriend. She doesn't seem very interested. I'm like, yeah, I know she's not. She'll have a, we'll have a talk about it. We'll have a serious chat about that. <laughs> and I ran out of that uh, club. I think, I think that was the last time I went to club also. <laughs> Thanks, Karma. <laughs> no, I think it was Karma. Thanks, Karma. Karma is still there. Oh, is it? Man. We should go clubbing. That should be our next episode. Just, like, just to find out the names. Yeah, you, me, Takshi will go clubbing after. Takshi will go and we'll stand out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I will top you with a story you remember, which is 
the uh, the rice bar incident. So when we were growing up, you guys, um, still growing up, um, how I met your mother was a huge is a huge thing to me. All right, I still think how I met your mother is better than friends. But also, um, I very much idolized Barney Stinson because I wanted to be cool like him. Because he's cool. Yes, Barney Stinson. That, that, that guy's awesome. So uh, I always wanted to grow up to be like Barney Stinson because he was so smooth with the girls and I really was not. So I remember it was you and Jose Far. Uh, oh, now I know who Jose Far. Yeah, you know Jose Far. <laughs> yeah, so it was, so it was Yoshan and Jose Far. I know Jose Far. Right. Hi, Jose Far. Yoshan and Jose Far. And this girl... And her friend, who was supposed to come, all right? This, my plan that day was to play the ultimate, have you met Yoshan? Uh, card and be the best wingman ever. He was. Right. Except... He wasn't. <laughs> except I wasn't, right. So, Yoshan came, Josefa came, girl came, girl's friend came. Josefa was supposed to hook up with friend... Yoshan was supposed to hook up with girl, right? What happened was, so as the night progressed, we had a couple of drinks. Um, girl's friend was either having a terrible day or too much of a good day. One of the, any reason to drink is a great reason to drink. And she was just downing shots like, <laughs> and I was like, whoa, calm down, sweetheart. And she's like, no, I'm fucking great. And, and, and Josefa's... Great imitation. Thanks. Uh, Josefa is kind of like a, I mean, he's also just waiting, and we were all young. Um, so he's like, I mean, yeah, that, that's what it takes. All right, cool, I'll, I'll try a match, but Josefa wasn't really much of a drinker. So um, we watched this girl getting progressively drunker, and it got to a point where this girl's now like, and now girl who's, who came with friend, can't enjoy the night. All right. So now Josefa is out of the picture. Josefa can't do anything. The world can't get through this girl. She, she's on the chair like. So now what the girl did was she had to sober up and take care of this friend. All right. So now Josefa is out. Josefa, we told Josefa long before, Mashan, don't get another drink. And he's like, no, nah, bro, it's okay. We're going to have one more. And then she was done. Yoshan was this close. But then, because now the girl has to take care of the friend, he can't do that either. So she's like, you guys, I don't think I'll be enjoying too much. I have to take care of her. And then she said something along with and my sister's also here, so I can't drink too much. And I was like, ah, that's fantastic. So the sister used to fly for Sri Lankan Airlines and still might. Um, so the sister had come with her Sri Lankan Airlines friends, and they were having their own party there. And this is one of the, well, the parties, some nonsense party. So the sister drank some there and then came and joined us. And now I figured, hurry, my plan here is also ruined. I'm never going to be a good big man. I let Barney Stinson down. I was down in the dumps. So I was also kind of drunk. And I remember I was somewhere here while I can now hear Josefa talking and girls' sister talking. And they're having a genuine conversation because they know each other. And they're talking something along the lines of, okay, so now they're in a relationship. But the girl just broke off with her current boyfriend because he's not nice or he's not good or something and now she's single and Josefa's like um, so what are you looking for in a guy and she's like I don't know I guess he just needs to be with a header I don't know I don't know he needs to be like sweet and kind and considerate and you know like a nice looking guy and Josefa's like that's <laughs> Takshi's actual voice that's, that's actually Takshi's voice you guys um, and we're like ah so, uh, Jose was like, ah, oh, so, like Amanda. And she's like, yeah, kind of like Amanda, I guess. Oh, shit. Yeah, kind of like Amanda, I guess. And then from here, I just got all, like, my ancestors came and said, wake up, wake up, wake up. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still like me. And she's like, yeah. And, and then I think Jose for challenged her saying, so, I mean, if Amanda's the kind of guy you're going for, why don't you go out for Amanda? And she, she said, yeah, absolutely. And that was the first time I realized that I was... I actually had some sort of potential. I, I, I figured I was a lost cause, but I had some sort of potential because then she came and sat on my lap. And uh, the, the saddest part is I, I thought I could get some that night. Then, Yoshan, what happened was you went home. Uzefa went home. A friend went home somehow. I had to drop the sisters back. They live in, I don't, I still, to this day, I don't know where they live, but I know it's very, 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 very far from where I lived. And I was, I was earning like, 
like basic salary back then and I could see my I could see that the meter in the taxi just going boom and I was like <laughs> there goes that the issue is because we had to go so far the tuk-tuk taxi had to stop to get gas bro okay now the tuk-tuk has stopped to get gas and they are waiting in the tuk like this and she's like uh. so now the sister is really drunk all right so now this girl came she took care of the friend now she's taking care of the sister and the sister's like uh, uh, i don't feel so good and i'm like sorry and she's like uh, i don't feel so good and i and i i jumped out of the tuk and then she ambled out of the tuk make the sound make the voice <laughs> And then she went. <laughs> so that's the line. That's a cue behind us. All right, this is a this is an actual <laughs> petrol station. And now this woman is a puking everywhere, like like one of those like those sprinklers that you get in the garden. And we're like, oh, fuck, what do we do now? Now two guys look at me like. <laughs> I'm like, I still don't know, so she ate something. And so we didn't, we, I, I don't know what to do. We couldn't clean up. And, and, the, and the petrol guy was like, uh, and so I, I had to pay him a thousand bucks and say, I'm sorry. And then we went, I dropped them home and I came back. All right. That's not the funny thing, Masha. The funny thing is I had exactly one week with this girl. All right. So now that was Sunday night. Monday night, sorry, Monday she called and said, hey, thanks so much for taking care of us. Um, if you want to hang out today, let me know. But this is Abans, right? And I actually had serious work because I was anyway messing up in Abans. And we had these things called clearance sales. So clearance sales, basically, when you know, Abans has something going off, they'll, they'll put all the shit in one cell and sell it. Um, so I had to be in charge of clearance sale. Day one, I could, she wanted to do lunch. I was like, dude, I had to work. So I couldn't do that day. Second day, she said, do you want to hang out? I said, why don't you come to the clearance sale? Like, we'll hang out here. While I'm doing work, I'll just flirt with you a bit and then get back to work. I used to come. Right. Used See? To flirt. Exactly. See, he could do it. But okay, that's it. Never mind. It's, used to it. flirt at clear Ex- sales. Exactly. Thanks, Yashan. Um, but Tuesday, oh, she's like, no, I, I can't do that. Wednesday, bro, uh, I think she again asked. But I said, look, I'm, I'm so sorry. I just, I just have work. So what we'll do is we'll meet up on Friday. Okay, Friday is, is done with the day. I can, we can do drinks or whatever you want to do. It's like, ah, okay. Thursday, that was, like, she sent me a text saying, hey, uh, so my ex wants to, <laughs> <laughs> so hey, my ex wants to do, uh, he, he wants to do dinner with me. I mean, all great stories start with, so my ex. <laughs> <laughs> so my ex wants to do dinner with me, but I don't want to go. Um, what do you think I should do? I said, <laughs> it's asking you. <laughs> Wait, so I, can, I can tell you what of an idiot I am. I said, I mean, hey, look, you guys are you guys are done. And if he wants to like hang out with you and like if he wants to have a talk with you, I, yeah, you can go for that. I I, I give you uh, p- permission or whatever it you does. You give permission. I give permission. I can't believe it gets stupid <laughs> after that. Then Masha, she said, oh, okay. That night there was no conversation. Bro. I didn't know what happened. I texted her. There was no reply. There was there was a call also. She didn't answer. Friday there was a complete day of like absence where she didn't talk to me. All right. Saturday, um, I somehow got through to this girl and she said, um, hey, look, I, I, I don't want to tell you this. I'm, I'm so sorry to hurt you. But he and I got to talking and um, we kind of like made up. So you're like the love guru. I am the love. I put them <laughs> back. And, and she's like, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to hurt you. And, and if you want to yell at me, you can yell. I said, look, I, I, I do like you, but I understand that you all have like three years of history and I, I can't really compete with that. So if, if y'all can make that work between y'all, yeah, all the best, man. Go for it. And I was thinking, man, what a great guy. What, a, what an absolute lose I am. But yeah, what a great guy I am. Uh, she said, oh, okay, thanks so much. That, that's very sweet of you. Um, okay, I, I guess I'll talk to you later or something. I was like, well, that's kind of weird. Don't talk to me. But she got the line. We finished that. Sunday, there was no conversation. I was like, eh. Monday, she called again and said, uh, so he and I decided to end things permanently. Do you want to hang out today? And I was like, no, we are done with this shit. Move on with your life. I'm moving on with my life. And that is my one week with the Asuras. <laughs> From the puke <laughs> to, to, for, to me putting up with her, going up with the ex and making things up. That was so, one week. Uh, to add to the plot twist, I hung out with the sister for three days. I hate this guy so much. <laughs> <laughs> but on the third day, you remember Barney Stinson has that scale? Right. Not too crazy. Right. I realized she was too much of the crazy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hurry, I understand completely. 
What a story, man. <laughs> Greatest stories ever part one, you guys. It gets worse. I don't know if you remember, again, in the height of this whole Barney Stinson thing, um, Amanda and I used to uh, tell um, stories to make each other look better. For one, the most popular one was the train story. I don't know if you remember it. No. I would go to, this is pre Google. Like, Google wasn't. Affordable. Google was there. Yeah. It wasn't affordable. <laughs> it was GPRS <laughs> or, you know, what was it called? Uh, M- MP, bro, MMSN. It was like. Right, right, right. right. Internet the was not. Right, right, right. You know, internet wasn't easily accessible on the fourth. So uh, we used to go, like, you know, to a place and then I'll, I'll stand next to a chick that we have identified and Naman would be sitting somewhere else pretend like we don't know each other I'll go like oh my god isn't that the guy and she'd be like well, what do you mean that's that, that guy I saw him in the news this morning she's like what, what do you mean he saved that dude from the railway track is that guy can't you remember I, I, I like to remember this and then she'd be like what what do you mean what do you mean I'm like that dude's a hero man man and I'll tell the bartender can you get one round for him on me and then I'll walk away that's all that's, that's all I say right and I'll just sit in the other side and I'll wait for a few minutes and like that. Then Amanda will time it. He has a perfect time. He'll just walk next to the girl and the bartender will give her a free drink. Like some dude gave you a free drink and then you'll like do that to me. And then she's like, so I heard. And Amanda's like, well, what do you mean? I heard that you saved it. Like, oh, I, 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 you know, oh, and it's then the, man, the I... night is on. <laughs> And in return, Amanda used to tell people that I was actually in the Navy and I was going to die the next day. <laughs> I don't know if uh, these are good stories or dead These are great stories. stories. <laughs> Welcome to our podcast. I'm so glad you get to know who we are. <laughs> this happened 10, 15 years back, man. Well, yeah. It's well, 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 it can't be 15 years. I was 15 years old. <laughs> it happened about 10 years ago. <laughs> it's so long ago, man. Like, most of those places are not even open anymore. Yeah. Like rice. What is yeah. You know the rice logo was me. <laughs> For context, this rice logo is a shadow of a man doing this. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go back to some more innocent stories. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, have you ever rung doorbells and run? No. Well, uh, there was a time when I could run. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like? <laughs> Weird. Very fast. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Anyway, so uh, we were part of this uh, yes. <laughs> very special activity right. in a very special place. Right. And we had to stay overnight, a bunch of friends, and there were adults in- involved. I don't want to use any keywords because I don't want to go to jail. Uh, so while we were helping to set up for this special activity, uh, we decided to have some fun because we were kids. We were like right. uh, 17, 16-year-old kids, right? The thing was, the event was in a very high security area. Right. So one friend was like, let's walk around and explore. Like, you know, it's three in the morning. We've never been to this part of Colombo at three in the morning. You know, right. have you ever gone out of the house at three in the morning at that age? No. <coughs> so then uh, Takshi cut that out. <laughs> 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 so <laughs> yeah, high security zone. <laughs> yeah. So then we were walking and then um, this dude named, uh, can right. I say the real name? Yeah, sure. I can say it. So, Manava was there. Right. Manava. Shout out to Manava. And uh, Yasiru was there. Shout out to Yasiru. Uh, Oshita was there. Oshada. Oshada. Oh my god. Oshada was there. Oshada. I'm pretty sure you were there. I wasn't there. I'm I like 70% sure you were there. I'm 100% sure because I never spent the night. All right. <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, uh, Yasiru decides to go and ring a doorbell right. of a house. That has like three Prados parked outside. Right. And it's like with barbed wires and you know like warning CCTV and you know three or four stories like a drug lord's house. Right. He goes and he rings the doorbell. He looks at us like he laughs and he starts running. Right. I'm like frozen. I'm like what? We were wearing white by the way. We were all wearing white clothes. Right. So now I can see Yasir running. I can see Osha the running the opposite direction. And me and Mara we're just frozen. Right. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. And Madhava was uh, not exactly athletic at that time. Now he's fit as hell. Right. I just pushed him into a ditch. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. There was like a ditch there. I'm like, macha, buck. And he just falls. <laughs> I, I literally heard the mud go splack. Right. I didn't know what to do because now I can see the door opening. Right. I thought I'm going to run, but I'm very white. You can see me from a mile away. What do I do? I roll under the fucking Prado. Oh, yeah. I just laid down and roll under the Prado. 
right and i am under the prod i can see manav in that swamp water is like oh i can see yasuru in the distance hiding behind a tree at uh, this side oshada is disappeared that bug again run really fast dude came out i i in my head it's a shotgun but i think it's a broomstick right. but in my head it's a shotgun <laughs> yeah? and this guy started using filth and he's screaming and he's like shouting he's like go go on the marano and i'm like under the truck like oh god please don't catch please don't catch please don't catch <laughs> and then he goes back in right we do not come out of our places for at least an hour Oh, because yeah. we don't know if he's looking right from the window or something oh, no, so we're just staying there Maru's like I've got <laughs> I don't know what water is it eventually after about uh, an hour or so I don't know maybe 45 minutes I feel confident to roll out right. and I'm covered in grease and dirt my white is not white anymore right. but Maru's one is like <laughs> I don't know what color it was <laughs> the smell of eventually went back to the special place where the special event was happening right and we had to join the parade it was a parade right a morning parade with some yeah yeah so we were not allowed to join no oh, shit <laughs> and we were scolded and uh, some of us may have gotten beaten by a broomstick oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my god man if it is your doorbell we rang i'm sorry <laughs> I wasn't there. I'm pretty sure you were. There. I I will show you that if I wasn't a part of this clique that ran away, I wasn't a part of the thing at all. Were you part of the clique that played Uno in the middle? No, that's still yours. <laughs> still us, man. Man, you did nothing. I was running behind girls apparently and ruining things for myself. All right, hit me up with the story. All right, so this is some of the stories that we found online slash got from people. Um, and you tell me what you would do <laughs> if you were in this situation all right <clears throat> i had a friend confess that every time he stayed at my apartment which was frequently because we lived in different countries sometimes he would stay for about a month at a time we sorry he watched me sleep for <laughs> i woke up with him just staring at me and he was literally inches away from my face just staring and i freaked out and he broke down and confessed my husband oh my was God. sleeping next to me that was the most creepiest thing that ever happened to me for sure it also ended our friendship first of all to stare at a woman sleeping that's when the woman is the most unattractive you're like and and the killer guy around this and and he's just like wow that's the prettiest thing ever what what would what would you do honestly like if if somebody if came i was the stone staring or if i'm the wife or the husband you are the wow in all three instances what do you do if you were the wife what would you do if you found out like a friend of yours was was like when you went to sleep you woke up and this guy's like oh. hello <laughs> Honestly, my instinct it would be to punch, like out of fear. Right. Not that I'm brave. I'm like ah, but us. Right. Oh, yeah, in a comic career, I'd be like, "Machagi, you want space? Come join." <laughs> What? I have a feeling that the second one is more likely than the first one. I'm like, "Hey, Machagi, what are you doing?" Oh man, if it happened to me for real, man, I I probably pee the bed. Imagine you wake up and another set of eyes on her. Bro, I would freak out, and I I wouldn't even know what to do. I would I would try to kick but I wouldn't be able to aim for this person here I I'd, I'd aim for somewhere there and kick this person here but when, yeah. when when you tell me this story it reminds me of another story that happened to me uh, much younger was were you the last one <laughs> <laughs> no no I was much much younger I think uh, 14 13 okay. uh, we had just watched the film <coughs> called the grudge right I think it came out when I was around 14 and uh, I'm a big horror film uh, person fanatic fanatic right so the grudge was a film that really messed me up like it kept me awake for a long time but I enjoy that it's, it's the part of the horror film experience right after watching the film somehow that night when I was Takshi okay Takshi <laughs> looking for a seat to come and join she was looking under the table I was like why what is she looking at my pants are short <laughs> well what an introduction to takshi when you see her next time okay season finale season finale all right so then um, we had watched i had watched the film right. i watched it alone that time dvd technology had just come out okay uh, i was freaked out this was like the third day after i watched the film i cannot sleep i was like really really like everything i look at was like the ghost 
somehow that night while i was sleeping my bedroom door opens the night light outside on the corridor is a reddish light all right so now i can see this red light coming into my room but i don't see anyone walking in or anything so i'm like i'm frozen and i'm like if anything comes i'm just going to kick because there's a scene in the grudge there's a scene in the grudge film where the ghost comes under the blanket like oh my lord raises, <laughs> she he raises the blanket and the woman is there oh my lord all right <laughs> So now I'm picturing this. So the first thing I do is I kick the blanket off. Right. So that she can't right, yeah, yeah. jump scams. I kick the blanket off. I'm like, yeah, now bitch, scare me if you can. I look at the door. I can't see this woman. I'm like, okay, where is this woman? She's the, the first thing, of course, that is the moment I started believing in God again. You know, right, yeah, of course. I'm like, all the gods in the world, please protect me. <laughs> Anyone. <laughs> Any god <laughs> from Thor to Zeus and, you know, whatever. And then suddenly the bed moves. Like, I can feel the bed go. And now <laughs> I was like... whatever's behind me i'm going to beat the shit out of it i'm going to scream and run just as i turn around i see these two eyes staring at me because of the red light the eyes are also red you know remember how i said i was going to beat that yeah. it didn't happen because i was so scared i just jump off the bed and i ran to my parents bedroom like ah! i jump in the middle of my parents and my dad's like i'm going to break that dvd machine i'm going to make him eat that dvd this for lunch he was so pissed off and we walked back to our bedroom and it was my brother my brother had watched the film behind me while i thought i was watching it alone and he was more messed up than i was and in the middle of the night he had just walked into my uh, bedroom thinking he, i could comfort him but he didn't know that i was bigger uh, what's the word there yeah 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 <laughs> yeah so yeah that when you said your staring story i remember this one <laughs> yeah so my dad actually uh, broke the dvd we never saw grudge again oh yeah yeah i mean we had already seen the movie break the dvd now what's going to happen she can't come from the dvd <laughs> <laughs> all right brother man we have time for one more story if you want to share yeah you do i we have lots of stories to share i have Nah, all, all these stories after, after a while all these stories kind of get gross bro <laughs> so if you have one story share Yashan all right. it's on you so um, I used to stay in a hostel when I was studying uh, my first year in marine school um, during that time it was all guys there were no chicks in the hostel it was all guys one room had about three guys right. and the rooms were next to each other so we had a really good time we were hanging out we were playing cricket playing carom all night we were doing projects assignments all night it was a really chilled out environment But if anyone was to talk to a girl outside in the mall or in the bus stand, and they come and say, "Macha, I spoke to a girl today," that will be the highlight of the night. Right. Everyone will surround him and be like, "You spoke to a girl?" To a female? She, she speaks our language. You know, it was it was very exciting when someone speaks to a girl. Right. Somehow, my roommate, the guy who I was sharing the room with, had got a new number because his previous number was. broken or disconnected or something had happened he had got a new number right he decided to message a guy in the other room as a chick right because this dude used to boss i spoke to that chick i spoke to this chick you know he was that kind of a person so he had told us that he had met a chick at majestic city food court and he had bought her food and all that and this guy decided to act like that girl right so she sends a message in english mind you all these guys are from uh, village schools and out stations so the english is not that great right, right. they we still learning at that point so then this dude sends a message and he say hi i think i saw you in mc recently and uh, you got me that drink uh, uh, i'm i i'm sorry i got your number from one of your friends and i really think you're cute right. and he sends this message to that friend other guy right now this dude gets the message he freaks out right apparently he actually met a chick okay all that is true he has bought her a drink also all that is true and now he thinks the girl is actually messaging him like he is so um horny that he doesn't understand how the chick got the number he doesn't understand that he doesn't even care he doesn't even care he's right. just messaging me so this dude now runs to our where me and my friend were messaging him and because my english was a bit better at that point right he comes to our room is like macha macha i met a girl that girl message we see the message can you type a reply to this like you know with good proper english I'm like okay, and now I'm messaging my friend through his phone. I'm like, oh hey, yeah, oh I I wasn't even thinking about you. Uh, what, should, maybe we should meet again. Then I I can hear that dude's phone go tee 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 tee, and I'm like, can you put it in silent, motherfucker? We're gonna play a prank. 
and this dude's like so happy he's like posting to everyone he's telling everyone he we are going to the english classes there was an english teacher he's telling the english teachers you know madam one girl spoke to me i'm speaking to her in english and we were texting him for three weeks to the point where he was sending his pictures to us and when he was asking pictures from us we were like taking pictures of butt cracks and you know you know you can angle it to make it look like the cleavage <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and and when he found out, what did he do? I say, wait. Oh, it gets worse. We tell him, we need to meet you. I mean, I need to meet you. I come to MC at the same food court. We have to be there at this time. And the entire batch takes a leave, and the entire batch is at MC. And this dude walks in there with flowers and chocolates, and we all clap. <laughs> and the dude's like, "Where's my girl? Where's my girl?" I'm like, "Me, ah, your girl." <laughs> So the entire batch was in on it. Oh, the entire batch knew it. Even the batches above and below knew it. He was the only dude who didn't know it. How do it? Well, um, younger age, younger pranks. I would never recommend new people doing it. <laughs> Sit. <laughs> One more story to add to that. <laughs> Hit me. So um, there was this Emerson Messenger. I don't know if you remember. Yes. Oh, you're from that generation. I'm from that generation. So uh, a friend of mine had created a fake MSN messenger with a chick's profile picture. Okay. Wow, catfishing. <laughs> that is all his dates, right? <laughs> this was I think we were in grade seven. Okay. That time the internet was do 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 do. Right. So this dude starts messaging another friend of mine in the same class, pretending to be this chick. Right. Hey, I saw you because those days in MSN you can get random. Uh, connections you don't really need to find someone you can just say a random connect and they connect right, you okay. so but this guy knew his username so he just connected directly and said that hey uh, i got randomly connected with you right uh, how are you i saw you that day in lyceum you are playing i'm from cis you know and the conversation goes on the conversation goes on for about 5 days to the point where he guides him through an entire session where he reaches oh man <coughs> where he reaches to the end he apexes he apexes right right and after that the dude who was doing it decided that this is enough like he can't do this yeah. anymore like that was the point he comes to school like dude i made him go all the way i don't know if i'm turning gay <laughs> and he didn't know what to do man like it was bad like he printed the entire thing for us to see and like the conversation the entire conversation was there to, for uh, everyone to read like this dude was telling uh, that fake chick that he is the greatest guy in the class he's the best karate fighter he's the best basketball player apparently he's the one who's introducing rugby to the school and you know like all that you know he was hyping 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 and uh, finally like it just all came out and it was a mess man God, I'm so glad. You know what? I I can from this moment say AIS is better than the school that he went to that I'm not going to name. <laughs> But at least my friends didn't do that to me. Oh, we we played a lot of pranks on each other. Well, you're shot. <laughs> no. Well, well, we grown now. We, right, right, right. Yeah, right, 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 right. we were kids. We, we were didn't kids, know we better. Kids, kids, clearly, <laughs> <laughs> clearly. Uh, have But, you have you ever switched off a uh, torana? <laughs> Not really bro you know what i mean i mean there were there were other things i was doing in my time anyway this is going to be just part 1 of the series of stories right we're definitely going to have a part 2 we need to have a part and two. Uh, if you are watching this episode and if you enjoyed it and if you want to share your fun stories and confessions where you think everyone would be entertained by it please share with us and we'll definitely incorporate it in our next episode but what do you say absolutely yeah? um you can reach out on Yoshimoshi ah uh, Instagram should be somewhere here man during the episode is that um or just put a comment in our YouTube video we love comments in our YouTube video Yoshan loves I <laughs> love the comments on YouTube video <laughs> so with that my sir i will say this was a lot more fun than i actually thought it was going to be it was great and uh, we should do another greatest stories ever told part 2 so yeah. Um, it's also kind of sad that I'm going to say this, but uh, Yoshan will be leaving us for a while, so our season finale will be coming soon. That's where you get to meet Takshi for once. Our season finale selling point is Takshi's face reveal. What is Takshi like? Who is Takshi? Who is Takshi? Is Takshi even real? Is it all made up? Yes, that is the season finale. Find out on the next episode. Though. Not the next episode. We still have a couple before. Find out another couple of episodes of. <laughs> 
that's so bro. <laughs> but with that, um, thanks you guys so much for watching. We had so much fun doing this. And we will see you guys next time. And please note that everything we said here was a joke. And all the stories, all the bad things that happened, we have already resolved. Everyone's friends. Everyone's friends. Everyone's friends. And uh, there were no hard feelings. We are grown-ups. And we won't do it again. I promise. And we won't do it again. That's, that's the one. And with that, we're going to wrap up the episode. Thank you, Takshi, for talking Thank you, Takshi, so much for watching. And, and that's the end of episode 10. That's so... That's so, bro! Oh.